On today's episode of Anime Afterthought, Noblesse, episode one, what must be protected, ordinary. I am so excited for today's episode. So I was forewarned that I needed to watch the OVA, Noblesse Awakening. It's basically the, the prologue, the chapter one in reality. It sets everything up, giving us a glimpse of the characters as well as a little bit of their backstory. So if you guys do find today's episode a little confusing, that's probably the reason why. But why I'm so excited is because that OVA was pretty fucking stellar. I mean, the animation was just fucking phenomenal. The animation was crisp and clean, dynamic and fluid, and my god, the end fight was spectacular. I just have my fingers crossed, and I'm hoping beyond hope that the series can live up to the quality of Awakening, because, I mean, it's pretty badass, not to mention the story, it's, it's setting up something pretty fucking stellar. All right, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and just jump into today's episode. I'm, 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 I'm just way too excited. Yeah, I don't think base is coming back in and you're dead yeah man i don't think he's there to help you so at least we know they're not afraid to show a little bit of blood you know this dude gotta be good at dance dance revolution with feet like that man seriously so yeah that entire first part has nothing to do with what i saw in the ova but at least we have a familiar face now so yeah, I gave you guys fair warning, but he got that injury during the OVA. And this just so happens to be the guy that captured slash saved them? Okay, so it looks like their memories were erased. I mean, I'm, it's kind of like the vampire thing to do, so. Okay, so they were trying to escape said organization in the OVA, yet they really didn't go into it besides the fact that Jake and Marie were fucking like, especially Jake was completely fucking maniacal and literally slaughtered the entire fucking creation group. And M24 unfortunately was, uh, was his last true victim as he stood up for the kids. Well, obviously he says yes if he's there standing guard. I really hope we dive further into these characters because this is legit Frankenstein, and he's a principal of the school. Yet Rizel is his master, the... the quote-unquote noblesse. Perv idiot. <laughs> uh. When you see a guy with a bandage over his nose, you know he's gonna be a fucking character. Okay, so they are still calling him Rai, it's a nickname he picked up in the OVA. Oh, is he getting jealous? Does he want a smartphone too? Quite a long time, yes, I would say eight centuries is a very long time indeed. <laughs> okay, so he does want a he does want a smartphone. I mean they focused on it in the first half of the school part. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, so that's I believe where the fight took place, correct? In the OVA, so it looks like the union has some kind of power to put out a fake report. Oh god, this is not going to bode well. <laughs> Don't hit the old dude! Oh, 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 oh. oh, in the nick of fucking time. Yeah, they're cruising for a bruise and they're gonna get their ass wrecked. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck, I bet he felt that one. What the fuck is this dude, like nine feet tall? <laughs> Neo. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and it's so true. It's so true. Oh, that's kind of bittersweet, man. Knowing he's passed and they didn't even know their real names. Yeah, but that foreboding music, uh, that doesn't sound like that's going to be easy, easier said than done. Yeah, so they're all part of Union, the group that was uh, behind the creation of M24 and M21 and the uh, main enemy basically in the OVA. Nope, pretty much uh, just two more probably immortals. It's safe to assume at this point. Okay, right off the bat, you can already tell that the pacing with Noblesse is already way different from Tower of God and God of High School. You know the old adage, slow and steady wins the race, slow and steady wins first place. I mean, don't get me wrong, I thoroughly enjoyed Tower of God and God of High School had some amazing animation, but they condensed so much into those 13 episodes, it was enough to make your head explode. I mean, there was a lot of shit going on, but this one basically was about Rizel wanting a self 
phone and M21 stepping up. Like that was basically it. Anyways, I will state one more time for those who are finding it kind of weird how it just kind of jumps in. Remember, there is an OVA that explains who, what, when, where, and why. A brief summation, Rizel, the noblesse, the strongest, the purest, the, the most perfect immortal being tasked with protection of the other nobles. After an 800 year slumber, he has awoken, eventually hooking up with his subordinate Frankenstein, who is currently presiding over a school as the principal, where Rai is enrolled and begins to live out, or at least try to live out a normal life. Eventually making friends, which I believe gives us our main cast of characters. Now, of course, the OVA used the Korean names, but I'm gonna just go ahead and just use the ones in today's episode. The red-haired bandaged node Yusuke, and the glassed video game connoisseur Monoba. And just a heads up, there's a girl too, but uh, she wasn't in today's episode. But with his coffins and presumably the contents inside being desired by the mysterious organization known as Union, it was only a matter of time before things got a little hectic. With M21 and M24, the quote unquote failed experiments of the Union being tasked and failing at their task to find the casket, this organization felt the need to send out a little bit heavier guns in the form of Jake and Marie, which yeah, all I can say is rest in peace as this inevitably leads us to a confrontation between Rizel, Frankenstein versus the leftover parts of the Union. There's a couple betrayals as well as the classmates getting involved. You know what? J just go fucking watch it. Honestly, it was badass. As far as today's episode living up to it, it was pretty fucking good. It's like I literally just watched the OVA and this is, you know, that was episode one. This is episode two. Like that was episode zero. This is episode one. Like it literally continues the next day as we see, you know, we are given a glimpse of this mysterious organization out in the middle of a jungle trying to locate, I guess, their target, which seems to be a scientist. Now, judging by the characters we saw in the OVA as well in today's, like the, the very first part where we see like Shark and Hammer and the Captain and all these quote unquote super individuals, maybe the Union just likes creating these humanoid super monstrosity type characters. Is that their goal with the scientist? Not 100% sure, but just with these two episodes alone though, you know we're gonna get some super unique characters. But with the jungle mission over, we turn our attention to Rizel and it's literally a slice of life. Picking up as we see Yusuke walk to school and he has the broken arm, the one he actually incurred from the OVA, but it turns out he's not really aware of what happened using that oh-so-tropic vampire-esque memory eraser slash replacer. He assumes he got hit by a car. In reality, he literally stood up to save two of his friend's lives and was getting beaten to a pulp by a monstrous individual. He doesn't even recognize M21, the friend of M24, who sacrificed himself to save him and his friends. I mean, he's even shocked that he's like, dude, you don't remember me? Like, what happened to your arm? Like, did you get that in the back? No, I got hit by a car. <laughs> Uh, but of course he has to inquire about this and he, he realizes, you know, it's it's easier this way. Not to mention, dude, you're on the run from the organization now. So it's maybe it's best if you stay with us. Like, hey man, I'm always looking to hire new staff. And this is why he is in his current position of security guard. Now the rest of the first half of this episode is literally Rai just wanting a fucking cell phone, being enamored by this magical device. Remember, he's been asleep for over 800 years. Of course, the world has changed. He even acknowledges that. But the look on Frankenstein's face when he just comes out and says, like, do I want a fucking cell phone? Like, that's hilarious. It looks like he's really trying to acclimate himself to this, this new world. Now, the second half of the episode focuses primarily on M21 and the fact that he doesn't really seem to know what to do. I mean, he's just going with the motions right now. I mean, yes, he has to stay away from the organization, but when push came to shove and he actually had to step up for his, his colleague as well as the students getting pushed around by a bunch bunch of fucking thugs, which by the way, introducing them into the area with that one chick who is just so oblivious about what's going on, that was priceless. But it seems he just threw that away, his his caution of getting caught, and you know what? Did fucking work, and that gave us today's, you know, nice bit of action. That animation was pretty sweet. I loved, I love when M21 just fucking manhandled that dude, just fucking brought him to his knees. Such a callback to the OVA. So yeah, it looks like, although, 
He's still on the run from the Union, and he does have a promise to keep with M24. I think he's actually found his place within this school. And then we round out the episode with, uh, yeah, it turns out that squad that was out in the fucking jungle burning people to death and blowing them up and stabbing them and just causing all kinds of chaos is headed to finish out M21, M24, Jake and Marie's task because they did not contact the Union. They're being sent to Japan to investigate what the fuck is up with the coffin and like I said, presumably it's contents. They just keep mentioning the coffin. Like, do they not know what's inside? I'm pretty sure if M21, a lower standing member, assumed it was the noblesse, I mean, they have to figure that whoever sent them out also knows that, like, whatever. So... <laughs> I kind of like the, the line from Shark. I think his name is Shark. Oh, we're not waging war. Now we're terrorists. Like, no, 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 dude. We're just here to investigate. Like, settle the fuck down. I mean, we already have a slew of fucking bodies from Jake and Marie going crazy. Not to mention the giant fucking explosion at the building where the last fight was. Like, okay, let's... The word of the day is subtlety. Let's have some subtlety. And then there is a post credit scene where we get presumably two more immortals, two more nobles. Once again, and just staring over the fucking city like I'm Batman I'm Batgirl I don't know. I'm, I'm having fun with this series. Like I said, the OVA, it pumped me up. And to this being a direct continuation of a now, what, is it four years old? Was it 2016 was the OVA or is it 2018? 2016. Four years. And it's literally like they're picking up the fucking next day. I fucking love that. Um, They're chalking Rye up to be like a good vampire. Like, I like when they do that, when they take this, this stereotype and flip it on its head. Like, fucking Blade. Like, he's like the vampire who hunts other vampires. Like, like, is this dude like a good immortal? Like, do we have to worry about him? I don't know. They're just setting this up to be pretty fucking, uh, pretty fucking epic. And same thing with its supposed villain. Like this, this organization known as the Union. And we've already seen that they're dealing with some, I'm assuming they're genetically modified. Frankenstein kind of said to Marie in his battle in the OVA that it all started with me, yet she's been altered. Like, I don't know. It's, it's weird. I'm assuming they're, I'm, <sighs> I don't know how to explain it. Is it pure bloods versus genetically modified humans? Like, is that what's going on? Because we do know that M21 and M24 are quote unquote failed creation. So they're diving into something. Are they trying to make another noblesse? Like, ah, I don't know. Like the gears in my head are turning and I think we got a hit. I think we got a hit because we took the pace nice and slow and the animation and the art and everything was good and the voice acting was awesome and ah. I'm thoroughly looking forward to watching this on a weekly basis. With all that being said and more noble next week, I cannot wait for future episodes.